All right, so this is a follow-up video to the steering wheel retrofit that I did. So I'm actually going to be doing the wiring for the rest of the buttons. Um, I'm just preparing the wiring. I'm not actually hooking these up to anything, but I'm just getting them ready. So if I want to put in a different uh, instrument cluster, I don't have to take the steering wheel off again and run wires and all that kind of stuff. But I'm also doing the illuminator lights. That's what I'm hooking up right now, though. So the illuminator lights on this particular steering wheel uh, are going to be the uh, pink and um, black with a pink stripe. That's what mine are. I think the colors just bled off of different cables. I think it's actually supposed to be uh, white and uh, black with a white stripe. But mine are black with a pink stripe and the it's just pink. So... This is all dependent on where you specifically place your wires at in your connector. Um, I also didn't show how you take apart the connector and how you put the pins in it, which I guess I should have done. So um, when you take apart the connectors, they're both the same. They're just a, like, they're both similar and they both come apart the same way. So you'll need a pick and you'll need to pry up this little piece of plastic. So see how it's raised up like that? You just need to get it up just like that. Like it doesn't have to be like out fully because there's little slots inside of here. Like, you see where this groove goes up and to the right? There's a little slot in there that when this, this piece is down, it locks these pins in. And there's also a clip on the front of these too. So you can see that there's uh, the main pin hole and there's like a little tiny hole. Or the little tiny hole is the main pin hole. So to get the pins out, you'll need some kind of, um, pin picking tool so i bought these i have them in the description of the last video and uh they were on amazon it was like i think it was like 20 bucks for like a big pack of them but basically um when you pop this piece up um to get the pins out you'll stick your your pin picking tool like in one of these holes and then there's like a little uh plastic clip thing kind of that you have to push a certain way and then it should release the pins and then you can just pull on the pins they're very tricky and i've definitely broke a couple of these uh pin connectors and i don't want to try and do it again that's like the main purpose on why i made the video too is because now you don't have to know you know a lot of these details and you don't actually have to take apart any of these pin connectors because i already did it just to figure out what information i needed to know because i needed to find out what what pins they were exactly that's why I took them apart, because I needed to find out which pin was which for these. So you can see this one has the groove on the right when it's like this, but it'll be upside down like that. So, um, no, that, that was right. So this will go in the back of here, and then you'll just shove it until it clicks. Um, these wires, I had to shove it with like a pick or something because they were like a little bigger, so I, I was able to work them in. And then they click on the front, and then you'll just give them a little bit of a tug test, and then they should sit. Once you're fully, fully done with everything, you'll push this clip down, though, and then that'll lock them in for good. And then um, what I'm doing right now, though, is I'm doing the illuminator lights. So I believe these buttons light up. Pretty sure that they do. So that's what I'm working on right now. So this set of wires um, I have mapped out on, on my connector here. So on my connector here, it goes 1 through 14 across the top. So including this uh, this connector right here. So that's 1 through 14. So 7 on the top, 7 on the bottom. So uh, 7 on the top, the purple one is the 7th. And then it starts at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on on the bottom. So in my connector, the way that I put them, I put the... Uh, I'm just going to call it the black and white stripe but it's actually pink. Like, so this one, you can see it's pink, but it's supposed to be white. And then the one behind it, to the left of it, uh, it's very hard to see, but it's uh, black with a white stripe and it, it kind of looks pink as well. So that one's in slot nine and that one's in slot 10, which is how I wrote it on here. This is how I personally configured my pins. You could configure yours. You could configure yours in any other way though. So 9 is illuminator negative, and then 10 is illuminator positive. 
So I have these wires in here. So this connector, everything is reversed. It's mirrored. So it goes from uh, one through seven on the top and one through seven on the bottom, but it goes from right to left. But it actually skips um, pin number six on the top and it skips pin number 13 on the bottom. So I have one through five and then seven, and then I have um, eight through nine or eight through 12 and then 14. So these two pins on the clock spring are not used, the two to the left. So I mapped these out so you can see that black wire on the bottom, that is pin eight. Pin nine is this one right here. And then pin 10 is this one to the left of it. So now I have these mapped out to where they need to be for the illuminator wires. Now I just have to land the other three wires from the rest of the connector in here for the cluster controls. And then after that, I am done with uh, the steering wheel, fortunately. And then uh, as you can see, this is how I ran the wires. So this is the clip thing that I was talking about in the first video. I ran it through here. I just popped this open and then I ran it through here and I just, I taped the wires to like some of the wiring harnesses and stuff that were in there. And then it runs up and around. Yeah, it runs up and around and then into where the head unit is. But yeah, I'm gonna figure out what wires go to the illuminator. So I'm gonna try and make it so when I turn this on, everything else turns on. But I don't know if these have certain brightnesses or if it's just like one does all. Like I don't know if I turn this onto this mode if if the lights will come on or if I have to turn it all the way on for lights to come on. I'll figure that out and that's something I'm gonna have to mess around with. But yeah, I will be right back and I'll try and figure this out and then try and give a better breakdown of what I'm doing. All right, so I finally figured it out and it took me basically all day to figure out because I was trying something different instead of doing it the easy way that I figured out like way later. But uh, so those wires that I ran from the bottom of the clock spring, I had two wires. I had, um, now both of mine were like clear and then you could see like copper on the inside and then the other one you could see, um, you could see like silver on the inside. I might've actually grabbed the wrong ones. I don't know. But um, so one of them, you'll just ground it. So you can literally ground it anywhere which that's gonna be the negative wire. The positive wire though, uh, I'm putting it on the on this purple wire right here, which is part of the, um, the dimming switch for the lights and all that. So yeah, I'm literally just tapping it into there. So whenever you turn on the, the light stock right here, this will come on, like this will light up, and then also the steering wheel buttons will, will light up too. So that's all I had to do. And then after that, I just need to find somewhere to place that ground wire and then everything should work. So hopefully, and it's actually really easy, like once figuring this out. Fortunately, I figured it out, so nobody else has to. So uh, yeah, it spent, uh, I spent a lot of time looking at several different manuals, wiring diagrams, and I could not find anything at all. And I just started having to figure stuff out on my own. So yeah. Um, I'll show you what that looks like in a second after I wire this and then I ground that other wire. All right, so here it is working. So I just finished splicing this wire. I have some heat shrink around it that I just need to heat up. But um, I attached this wire to this frame right here because this is all common ground. So once I attach this to here, I literally just have it sitting on it. So now it's grounded out, makes a complete circuit. And when I turn the light stock on, the lights come on on the steering wheel buttons. So now I just need to find somewhere to land this wire permanently, which I think I'm gonna land it somewhere down at the fuse box, because the fuse box down there does have um, a grounding screw coming off it, and I will point that out in a second. All right, so this is what I did. So um, by the way, as well, so in here, I ran the wires through there. There's like a little clip thing that uh, goes here, and then there's another one in the back, sort of. And that's where I like ran the wires through and then I reclipped it together. And then uh, I ran the wire. Um, I ran it like alongside down this wire and then it's right here. So the one of them comes out right here and then it comes up and then it goes into this connector where I tapped it in onto that purple wire. And then the other one is the ground wire. Um, this is the fuse box. So this is a 10 millimeter nut 
And uh, all I did was, these wires are for my gauges. They're ground wires for my gauges. And then the other wires, I don't know what the other wires are for, for the gauge, but um, all I did was take a 10 millimeter off and then I put an eyelet on those wires, the ground wires, and then I just screwed it in there. And now it works. So now I have the lights on the buttons. So all you do to take this off too is um, there's one screw right here and there's also one screw down here to take off this whole piece. Other than that, it just it just clips in, it, like it just snaps in. So it just snaps in up in there. And then uh, this piece I would highly recommend taking off. All you have to do is like pinch these clips together. There's two here and then there's two here. It's a little challenging to get this off, but um, once you get it off, it, it definitely makes it easier because then you don't have to have this big piece like all up in your way and all that. So yeah, and then it just clips back in just like that. And then you just have to plug in your wires and then put those two screws back in. And then uh, you have to put this panel back on. And then after that, you're done. So uh, I hope this video is very helpful for everyone. Uh, I hope nobody else has to struggle. <laughs> I hope that I was able to take the struggle out by struggling myself so nobody else has to because uh, it is very challenging to find very, very oddly specific things that I'm trying to do that are like really custom. So I'm trying to make videos on it so that way people don't have to try and figure it out themselves. But yeah, uh, give this video a like and you know share it on the forums or whatever if, if it was helpful.